Welcome children. Today we are going to talk about a new character in the scriptures, one of Jacob's descendants born in Mitzrayim. Remember, 70 people had first come to live in Mitzrayim, but many, many years had gone by since Jacob's family had moved there, and now there were lots more people. The children of those first families grew up and had children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and great-great-great-great-grandchildren. A whole new group of people were there, just as Yahweh had promised. Jacob's family had become a huge number of people, and they were called Hebrews. There were so many Hebrews that the new Pharaoh was not happy about it. For years the Hebrews had worked alongside the Mitzrites, but now Pharaoh decided to force Jacob's descendants to work extra hard as his slaves. But this failed to stop the Hebrews from living their lives and becoming an even bigger group of people. So Pharaoh then decided he would get rid of any Hebrew baby boys that were born. Oh no, that's so sad. But Pharaoh didn't want them to grow up to be strong men and maybe become soldiers against the Mitzrites. There was one mother from the tribe of Levi who gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. His mother and father hid their baby so that Pharaoh wouldn't try to get rid of him. But by the time this baby reached three months old, he became a little too noisy and a little too big to hide. So his mother made a special waterproof basket and put him into it. She then placed the basket into the water by the reeds in the river. Now this baby had a big sister who stayed close by watching to make sure that the baby was safe. Her name was Miriam. One day, Pharaoh's daughter went to the river to take a bath and saw the basket. When she opened it, the baby was crying and she knew it was not a Mitzrite baby. She felt sorry for this beautiful child and wouldn't even think of getting rid of him. When the baby's sister saw this, she immediately came running to Pharaoh's daughter and offered to help by getting a babysitter for the baby. Pharaoh's daughter thought that was a very good idea and she let Miriam go and fetch someone. Well, Miriam was a smart girl. Who do you think she went to get? Her mother. The mother's name was Jochebed. Pharaoh's daughter gave the baby to his mother and told her to bring him back when he was a little older. Wow, that's wonderful. The mother didn't have to hide the baby anymore. She could take care of him and not be afraid. Yahweh provided for them, didn't he? When the baby got bigger, she took him back to Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter named him Moshe because she had drawn him out of the water. From now on, young Moshe would live in the palace with the Mitzrite royalty. Even though Moshe grew up in the palace, he knew his birth family were Hebrew the people that the Mitzrites were making into slaves. One day, when Moshe had grown tall and strong, he happened to see a Mitzrite beating up one of the Hebrew slaves. Moshe was not happy about that. When the Mitzrite was all alone, Moshe went and beat him up and killed him. Of course, Moshe knew he had not done a good thing. He glanced around to make sure no one was looking and hid the mitts right in the sand. The next day, Moshe came across two Hebrews arguing. He tried to intervene, but they taunted him, asking if he was going to beat them up and take their lives like he did the mitts right. Uh-oh, now Moshe knew he was in trouble. And when Pharaoh found out, he was going to be in even more trouble. So Moshe ran away. Moshe escaped to a land called Midian. After traveling a long way, he found a well and sat down to rest. 
In this land there was a priest. He had seven daughters, and it was their job to water the sheep. The daughters had just arrived at the well to water the sheep, but some of the other shepherds decided to be bullies and wouldn't let the girls bring their sheep to the water. Now that wasn't very nice, was it? But thankfully, big, strong Moshe saw them and scared them away. Not only did he rescue the girls, but he also watered the sheep for them. The girls ran to tell their father about this kind stranger, and their father invited Moshe to eat with them. Moshe ended up settling down to live with them there in Midian. He got married to one of Yithro's daughters and had two sons. Meanwhile, back in Mitzrayim, a new pharaoh had come to power. He was even meaner to the Hebrews than the pharaoh before him. The work had become so terribly hard on the Hebrew people. They were constantly crying out to Yahweh for help. Yahweh listened and remembered what he had promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. One day, Moshe led the sheep out to feed close to a mountain called Horeb. There he spotted a flame blazing on a bush. But the flame was not burning up the bush. Moshe was curious, but before he could get near enough, Yahweh spoke to him and told him not to get close. Yahweh called to him, Moshe, Moshe. Moshe answered him and said, Here I am. In Hebrew, this is Hidani. Yahweh told him to take his sandals off because the place where he was standing was set apart ground. Moshe was afraid and covered his face. Yahweh declared to Moshe that he was the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He told Moshe that he had heard the cries of the Hebrew people and had come down to deliver them. Yahweh then made it clear that he was sending him, Moshe, to get the Hebrews out of Mitzrayim. Moshe wondered what he should answer if the Hebrews asked him who sent him. Yahweh replied that he should say, I am sent him. He told Moshe that he was I am that which I am, and that's what his name would be forever. He promised that one day all the Hebrews would worship him on that very mountain. Yahweh then taught Moshe exactly what to tell Pharaoh. He warned that Pharaoh would not listen at first, but in the end he would, and not only would the Hebrews get to leave Mitzrayim, but the Hebrew women would ask their Mitzrayim neighbors for silver things and gold things and clothes, and the Mitzrites would give them anything they wanted. Wow, I'm looking forward to hearing all about that. But we'll have to save that for another time, because we've come to the end of our story for today. So we will see you next time for another exciting Torah portion. Shalom.